So I've got some things entered in my inventory tabs now. Let's talk about what happens when you sell your finished goods. Whether you've got this stuff in stock and it's ready made, ready to ship and you're holding on to it, or whether you are creating things to order and just now entering something in your inventory spreadsheet because someone just ordered it and you've created it and now you're entering it here. Selling it or marking things as sold on the spreadsheet is the same kind of process. So all you've got to do when you sell one of these items is increase whatever row in the unit sold this year column. So I'm just going to put a couple of these in here as an example so you can see what happens. And the number needs to be cumulative throughout the year. So if I sell another 3T sunflower toddler dress for 63 bucks, then I'm going to increase the one to a two. All right, we're going to make it cumulative for the year. You might be asking yourself, what if I had a sale? What if I had a bundle or a discount or whatever and it didn't actually sell for this price? That is okay. This number is just here for reference. It's not traveling anywhere. The spreadsheet doesn't total your sales for you. You need to be doing that either in one of the Paper and Spark seller spreadsheets or in a separate bookkeeping system. It's just here so you can quickly eyeball the retail price versus the cost of the item if you want to. But if you didn't actually sell it for this price, do not worry about it. For inventory purposes, we're really just concerned about the cost of things, not so much the sales price of things. So you would be able to increase these numbers cumulatively for the year. And as you mark things sold, your ending units is going to decrease and your cost of ending units remaining will also decrease. What that means is that for tax purposes, the cost of that item is effectively going into your cost of goods sold deduction. You've got less ending inventory here to count. It's not here anymore. So that must mean we get to deduct the cost of this good for taxes. The next question you might have when you see this is, what happens if I've got the same product on here multiple times and I'm not sure which one sold? Well, for that question, I'm going to refer you to the FIFO and LIFO video that you can watch that describes what you need to do if you've got either identical finished goods that you need to mark sold or identical materials and supplies that you need to mark sold. Go ahead and check out that FIFO and LIFO video if you haven't seen it already. Now let's talk about the personal use column. Occasionally we might create something and then end up not putting it up for sale. We might donate it to like a giveaway event. We might like donate it to a charity. We might use it as a giveaway on Instagram or social media. We might gift it to our own daughter. We might gift it to a friend, give it to somebody for their birthday, whatever. That is all those are all examples of personal use. So anytime we take out a product for personal use, we don't wanna take a cost of goods sold deduction for it. If you take a look at the Schedule C, which is the tax form a lot of us are filling out, you'll actually see right here that it says your inventory purchases less cost of items withdrawn for personal use. And this is the IRS's way of saying you need to basically not include the cost of any inventory that you ended up withdrawing for a non-business use. And I know that that happens sometimes. So I've got these special little purple columns on each inventory tab where you can say, hey, I took out this item, one of those for personal use. And the spreadsheet is going to keep track of your total personal use expenses throughout the year so that when it comes time to do that Schedule C, you will easily be able to subtract out the cost of your personal use items from your inventory purchases. So anytime you take out an item for personal use, you would just increase the number in this column. It's cumulative, just like units sold for the year. Um, you'll be able to calculate your cost of personal use and it's also going to decrease your ending units remaining. 
The last thing I want to mention on any of your inventory tabs is that you can use your spreadsheet software's filter and sort functions to organize your rows. So you don't really want to delete anything off of here throughout the year because you might have important information being tallied that you need to know in these tax totals at year end. So if you ever want to reorganize how things look, maybe you want to sort by size, um, you can use the filter and sort functions. So that's what all these little drop down arrows are. You decide whatever descriptor you want to filter or sort by and you would click the down arrow. So let's say this is my size column and I want to have everything in order by size. I'd click this little drop down here. I can do ascending and now it's going to sort everything for me by size. Unfortunately, this is not really a good example because it is going to go in alphabetical order and numerical order, I guess. So six months ends up down here, even though it's the smallest size available, but you get the gist. It's at least putting like all of my 18 month stuff together so I can see what I've got in stock for that size. The next, another good example of something you might want to sort by is product ID. If you end up using this column, um, if you want to put things back in alphabetical order by product description, you can do that. Um, and all the corresponding data will move with the row that you're sorting by. Let's say you want to get rid of things that are sold out. You don't want to see them anymore. So what you could do is look at your ending units remaining and this would be filtering versus sorting, you can uncheck anything that's blank. Now I only see the guys that have units remaining. If you ever want to clear a filter or a sort, you just click whatever drop down arrow is filtering or sorting, click clear filter, and it will refresh back to normal. Maybe you want to filter or sort by your best selling products. In that case, you would click the descending column to be able to see who has sold the most this year. So that is how you can use filtering or sorting to organize your information how you want to see it. I'll also throw in that I don't necessarily recommend turning on filtering or sorting for your materials tabs. It is okay on your inventory tab, but if you do it on your materials tabs, you can affect the cost of goods made formulas that are linking to those cells. So if you change the order of these cells over here and you've got other formulas referencing them, it's going to affect these formulas. So if you're using your cost of goods made tab and you're linking to the cost per unit of a material or supply, you don't want to turn on filtering or sorting and change the order of these rows.